praise the Lord, praise the Lord, Pastor Michael Jackson. Welcome to The Bible Speaks Live. Coming to you with a word from the Lord tonight. Praying that all is well between you and Him. He is the author and finisher of our faith after all. So we want to give Him honor, we want to give Him praise, we want to give Him glory for all that He is doing. We are streaming right now live on Spreaker.com. That is our podcast platform. Shout out to all of those who do listen and download our podcast on Spreaker.com from across the United States. And yes, around the world, God bless you, Spreaker. We are also streaming live on YouTube. We are streaming live on Facebook and also on Periscope. So if you are watching on Facebook, you can uh, you can share this page. And if you are watching on Periscope, uh, you can retweet it because it's also simulcast over Twitter. Amen. So we bless him and we thank him for what he is doing in our midst. Uh, we have a word tonight that the Lord has placed on upon, upon our hearts and we pray that you will be receptive to what the Lord is doing. Uh, you can also listen to our podcast on Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and TuneIn Radio. You can also go to our website at thatstheword.org. That's thatstheword.org. And you can also go to our YouTube channel. And you can subscribe by typing in That's the Word Ministries or Pastor Michael Jakes. And I'll bring you right to our channel. Amen. Well, we bless the Lord once again. We thank him for what he's doing in our midst and we pray uh, that he is also working in your life. We are going to pray right now and get right into uh, the word for this evening. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you once again. Lord, you have allowed us this time and this opportunity, Lord, to be able to share your word. Lord, we pray that this word might be received. Lord, we pray that this word might be uh, used uh, to further uh, your kingdom, Lord Jesus. That is all that we desire to do, is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we pray that you will have your way. Draw those that need to hear this word tonight, Lord. We pray you will draw them unto this location over the World Wide Web, Lord. Have your way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. I want to bring you to the book of Jude. The book of Jude. That's that small book right before you get to the book of Revelation. Uh, that book that has only one chapter. Uh, that book that has only 25 verses. The book of Jude. And I won't even say chapter 1 because it's just Jude. So Jude 1. We're starting in Jude 1. And it says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James... To them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Verse number two. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. I want to read verse number two again. It says, Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. You know, while the modern church, while Today's church is busy trying to accumulate things, while today's church is busy trying to uh, increase in, in money and wealth and goods and houses and lands and all sorts of material things. Uh, the world is going to hell, in a sense, in a truth. In a, what we mean by this is that the while, while we do not preach the true gospel, the world is dying Christless. The world is dying without the Lord. Because the church, segments of the church, well, we're not talking about the church as a whole, of course, but there are segments of the church uh, that, is, that are preaching a word that is another gospel. And they are giving the people who are listening another Jesus. And we must be careful that we preach the true gospel. And the true gospel is that Jesus Christ died on the cross, that he shed his blood for our sins. Many churches refuse to preach about the blood anymore. Many churches refuse to preach about the cross anymore. Some churches will not even sing songs concerning uh the cross and redemption anymore. And this is a mistake and this is a, a trick of the enemy. But his church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will stand. 
his church will stand. Now, when we read these verses, he's talking about mercy and peace and love be multiplied. That word multiplied in the Greek simply means increase, increase. And so once again, while the modern church is being lulled to sleep, trying to bring increase to its adherents, to make sure that you have enough money in the bank, to make sure you have enough money to do what it is that you need to do, while the church continues to follow after individuals who bring money cometh seminars and write books showing us how to gain uh, and, and get more money. They are missing the boat. They are missing the point because that is not what the gospel is all about. The gospel is not about how much money you can make. The gospel is not about how much money you have in the bank. Of course, of course we all need money. Of course we all need money and desire money to live. Of course. But when the focus becomes money, it is a mistake. And it is sin. When the focus of any ministry is how to make more money, there is a problem. There is a problem. And don't tell me that there are not ministries based solely upon that. There are. I won't mention any names tonight. But they are there. Ministries that are focused completely upon the dollar, the green, the buck. And they are making a mistake and they are false prophets and they are false teachers. So when we look at Jude, he tells us that rather than have increase in things and money, he says there is something more that we need. And the Lord is willing to give us these things. I want to talk about tonight the increase that we need. The increase that we need. And I can say the increase that we really need. And we, he reads it, we read it right here. Mercy unto you. Peace. Love. We're going to talk about five things tonight. That the Lord wants to increase in our lives. Five things. Three of them we see right here. Mercy, peace, and love. They need to be on the increase. On the increase. Now I want you to see who he's talking to. Who is Jude who happens to be the brother of Jesus Christ? Who is he speaking to? First of all, he calls himself the servant of Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus Christ was his brother. You want to say his half-brother? But now he understands. You see, while Jude was, while Jesus was on earth, during Jesus' three-year ministry on earth, Jude and the rest of the family, uh, besides Mary, they did not believe in their brother as being the Messiah. They did not believe in him. But whatever happened between his crucifixion, between his crucifixion and resurrection, they believed. And Jude, Jude is now a believer as he writes this. And he says he is the brother of James, who is also a brother of Jesus Christ, who also did not believe in him. We, we hear talk of him in the book of Acts. James. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, brother of James, that are, and here's who he's talking to, to them that are sanctified by God the Father. He says he's speaking to those who are preserved in Jesus Christ. And he's speaking to those who are called. That tells me something. Unless you are sanctified, unless you are being preserved, and unless you have been called by him, you cannot even, you cannot even you cannot even hear this message. What I'm saying is, if you're not sanctified, preserved, and called, it means you're not saved. It means you're not born again. Because that's what he's driving at when he says, I'm speaking to those who are sanctified, who have been set apart by God, 
who have been called out of the kingdom of darkness and they are now in the kingdom of his dear son. I'm speaking to those who have been preserved. They are being kept by the power of God. And I'm speaking to those who are called, who are the called, as uh, Paul put it in Romans uh, chapter 8, who are the called according to his purpose. That's who he's speaking to. So you got to be born again in order to understand, in order to... The, in order for these words to take root, there are many in these other gospels that are preaching another Jesus who wants to shower you with money and cars and wealth. There are many in these other gospels who are not born again. They are not born again. They are not saved. And yet there are some who are simply deceived. Now they're all deceived, but yes, can the child of God be deceived? Oh yes, the child of God can be deceived. Oh yes, when the child of God does not make it his does not make it his lifestyle to read the word of God. I mean to dig deep into the word of God so that they're able to discern truth from error and right from wrong and false doctrine from uh and from uh correct doctrine. Yes, the child of God can be deceived. Can be deceived. That's what Paul was speaking about when he spoke to the Galatians. And he called them all foolish Galatians several times in the book of Galatians. He says, foolish Galatians, who has, who has bewitched you? Who has turned you around? Why are you now turning your back on the one who has called you out? Why? So the child of God can become deceived. And it's able to become unborn again. But they can become definitely deceived. And you don't want that to happen. Prevention, uh, uh, de deception prevention comes by digging yourself deep in the word. Deception, deception, deception is running rampant in the church. Running rampant. Don't be a part of it. Jude says, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied be increased. We need, ladies and gentlemen, we need mercy. You need mercy. I need mercy. Oh yes. Mercy when you read uh when you read the book of uh, when you read the book of Lamentations, if we can go there. The book of Lamentations chapter number 3. Lamentations chapter number 3, that's that book that's right after Jeremiah. That book of Lamentations that no one that no one seems to know is there. The book of Lamentations, chapter number 3. And in verse uh, number 22. Lamentations, chapter 3, and verse number 22. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies, or it is because of the Lord's mercies, that we are not consumed. He's saying right there, listen, if it were not for, if it were not for the continual mercies of the Lord, that we would be consumed. His fire would lick us up. We would be gone. Completely. He says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. His compassions do not fail. Here's what it says. They are new every morning. They are new every morning. Every morning. Praise God. Every morning you have a brand new start. You get to start all over again. No matter what the day was like before. The day before. Whether you had a bad day. Whether you did something you should have done. Whether you said something you should have said. Whether you, you went someplace that you shouldn't have went. It was just a bad day all around. You get a chance. You get a chance to do it all over again. Great is thy faithfulness. You get a chance to make it right, so to speak. He cleanses. He washes. When you talk about mercy, there is forgiveness that is in that mercy. He forgives. He cleanses. He washes. He purges. All of these things because of his mercy. Mercy. Oh, you know the song. You know the song. 
mercy that was great. Mercy that was great and grace was free. Pardon that was multiplied to me. There my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. Oh yes. Great mercy at Calvary. At the cross. That's where we find mercy. That's the place. You need mercy. And you need for mercy to be increased in your life. Increased. You want it to be multiplied. Lord, I need your mercy. Lord, I need more of your mercy. Because we are ever imperfect. The Bible says, be ye perfect as your heavenly Father is, is perfect. And that's talking about be complete. It's talking about be mature. We will never get to the, we will never, there is no graduating class in perfection. There is no graduating class in spiritual maturity. Oh yes, you can become more mature, but you will never reach a point where you say, I am finally completely, totally mature and I don't need anything else. No, that will never happen. That will never happen because we are still in this body of flesh. We are still in this body that is wrapped with sin. We are still there. And so we must make sure that while we are here, that we plead for his mercy daily. We need his mercy. He says here also, he says, mercy and peace. We need peace. Peace. When we talk about peace, that word peace in the Bible, it's talking about joining. It's the word join. And when something is at peace, it is because two parties who were once separated are now joined together. And peace is made. That's the peace that we need. And that's the peace that we have. We have justifying peace. Oh yes, we have justifying peace. Because as soon as you signed your name on the dotted line, as soon as you said yes to Jesus, as soon as you became born again, his peace comes upon you. You are at peace. Why? Because what was once separated has now become one. You are now in Christ. And you have become one with him. You are no longer alienated. You are no longer a stranger. You have now become one with him. And that brings peace. Peace. That's why the song can say peace, peace, wonderful peace. Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever I pray in fathomless billows of love. Peace. This is that peace that passes all understanding. Peace. Jesus said, peace not as the world gives, gives I unto you. I give you a perfect peace. Perfect peace. And now there's a sub also a sub thing called sanctifying peace. We have that justifying peace. It's, it's automatic when you become born again. But sanctifying peace, sanctifying peace is that peace that you have when you know not just that your sins have been covered, but sanctifying peace is a progressive thing. Once again, you can have, you can have turmoil going on in your life. Turmoil. And not because of sin. But just so many things happening at one time in your life. But you can still have peace. Peace. You see, the world tries hard. The, tr the world tries hard to take this peace that we have away. The world wants to give us a, a false peace. A pseudo peace. A peace that is not real. A peace that does not last. Once again. The words of Jesus. I give you peace not as the world gives. Perfect peace. The Bible says, I will keep him in perfect peace 
whose mind is stayed on thee. Perfect peace. You understand what perfect peace is? That's the peace that we just spoke about. It's that peace that passes all understanding. You, you can't even describe it. It's overflowing, overwhelming peace. In the midst of a storm, I have peace. Peace, as the old song says, peace like a river. I have peace. And that only happens when you're in Christ. That can only happen when you're in Christ. That can only happen when you're sanctified, preserved, and called. Oh, yes. And there's another, there's another thing that we need to increase in our life. We need that increase of peace. Increase the peace, Lord Jesus. Increase the peace. We also need, we also need love. We need for love to be increased in our hearts. We need love for our fellow brothers and sisters. And we even need love for the rest of the world. We need for love to be increased. Increased. Let me make more, one more mention about his peace before I delve into the love. And it's very important. The Bible says, Great peace have they who love thy law. Psalm 119, 165. Great peace, great peace have they that love thy law. You want peace? You want overwhelming peace? You want perfect peace? Get into the word of God. Get into the word of God. It will give you peace. It'll give you peace. But you have to make time for the word. We make time for so many things. We make time. We make time. We find time. You got to give the word of God. It's proper place in your life. You must give the word of God the proper place in your life. You have to. It'll bring peace. It'll bring peace. Let's get back to love. We need for love to be increased in this in this world that has been that is being corrupted and has become more corrupt and is becoming more and more corrupt as the days go by. Let me tell you what. We need love. We need love. Because we can see things and you can hear things and you can see what people do, you can hear what people say, and it can really turn and twist your emotions. Where that's not love. That's not love what you're thinking. That's not love what you're saying about certain individuals. It's not love. It's not love. It's out of place. It's out of place for the child of God. We need love. We need love. Lord, increase the love. Increase the love. As the, day, as the days grow shorter, listen, I don't know what it is. And I don't want to really depart from my subject tonight. But the Lord is moving in this direction at this particular time. I, I sense his presence. I don't know what it is. But Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Now you can take that for what it means. I'm not a date setter. Never have been a date setter. And don't listen to anybody who tries to set dates. For when Jesus is coming. Don't listen. As soon as they make a date, you can just write them off. Jesus is coming soon. That's not a date. It's coming soon. And I don't know what soon means. I don't know if soon means days, weeks, months. I don't know if soon means years. But Jesus is coming soon. This is all I know. This is what I've been hearing. I don't believe in coincidences. No, 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 no. Far from it. No coincidences. But I've been hearing, I've been hearing, I've been noticing. I, I remember this past Sunday, out of nowhere, seemingly out of nowhere, once again, it's the Spirit of God. 
out of nowhere, the subject of the rapture came up. The rapture. Today, the subject of the rapture came up several times during the day as I was listening to other, other individuals. And now, the rapture. Jesus is coming soon. Keep your eyes on that little place called Israel. Keep your eyes there. Because that's the hotbed. That's where, that's where those are God's people. That's where everything is going to happen. When the rapture happens. God's work for Israel will begin. It's going to be a tribulation. We won't go through it now because that's not where we are tonight. But remember, Jesus is coming again. And as Jesus is coming again, we need to increase in our love. Because there are people who don't know the Lord that are going to be left behind. There are people that are going to be left behind. I was speaking recently. They are going to be in... In some cases, there are going to be entire church bodies that are left behind. Entire church bodies. Can you imagine such a thing? I can imagine such a thing. Because I know that some congregations, wherever they may be, wherever they exist, are not preaching a gospel that has been sanctioned by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not behind it. The Holy Spirit is not promoting it. And the people are receiving it as truth. And it's not. And they are being deceived. And Jesus is going to come unawares and catch folk by surprise. It's going to happen. When? I don't know. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ in the forgiveness of your sins? Has he cleansed you? Has he washed you? Have you sensed, have you, have you felt the convicting power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Are you a churchgoer or are you a Christian? Have you been just churchified or have you been sanctified? Are you part of the crowd in the mob that Jesus, uh, when the woman uh, who had the issue of blood, all those people were all around Jesus and they were brushing up against him and touching him and, and one woman came and touched him and power exited Jesus and he said, who touched me? Who touched me? Are you just one of those ones who are just jostling him and touching him but you have no real purpose? Because you're just a hanger, you're just a clinger, you're just there. Are you touching Jesus because you have a need? Have you allowed him to touch you? See, it's easy to be part of a crowd. But are you part of the church? Are you part of the church? Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. The way you get ready. Give your heart to Jesus. Give your heart to Jesus. Before it is too late. You don't want to be here after the rapture takes place. You don't want to be here then. Give your heart to Jesus. He is available. He is available. Let love increase. The Lord is at work. The Lord is at work. So we need mercy to be increased. We need peace to be increased. We need love to be increased. And also, we read in 1 Peter, in 1 Peter chapter number, 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter, 2nd, let's go to 2nd Peter. It's best to go to 2nd Peter uh, chapter number, 
uh, 1 and verse number 2. And notice also who Simon Peter is talking to. If you start in verse number 1, Simon Peter says he's a servant of the apostle Jesus and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith. He's speaking to those who have like precious faith. Precious faith is faith that is in Christ and Christ alone. Faith that is in Christ and the cross. Because you can't separate Christ from the cross. Not that he's on the cross, but you cannot separate Christ from what he accomplished on the cross. That's what we mean when we say Christ and the cross. But he says, who have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. And he says in verse number two, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace. We've already talked about the peace that we need. But he says grace. Grace. Let grace be increased. You see, because mercy comes because of grace. Mercy flows from grace. What did we just say from that song? Mercy there was great and grace was free. Grace was free. And so we need to make sure that we allow his grace to cover us. Grace. What is grace? It's been called God's unmerited favor. It's been, God, it's been called uh, the goodness of God to undeserving men. It's been called what God does for you that you don't deserve. It's grace. It's grace. It's You don't deserve it. But here's the thing. The Bible says that we are saved. We are saved by grace. It's by grace. It's undeserved. But it's a free gift. We are saved by grace through faith. And that faith is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one can boast. We need grace to be increased in our lives. We need grace to be increased. Here's what it says in second. Here's what it says in second uh, Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter number twelve. We're gonna stay here. For a little bit. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. Familiar portion of scripture. And it says. And he said unto me. This is the words of Jesus to the apostle Paul. He says my grace. Is sufficient. For thee. For my strength is made perfect. In weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Let's, let's, let's draw this out for a bit. Let's stay here for a little while. What is he talking about when he says, my grace is sufficient? He says, my grace is all you need. My grace is all you need. Once again, what flows from grace? Mercy flows from grace. It's all you need. It's all you need. It's a song, it's a song, it's a wonderful old song that says he giveth more grace when the burdens grow greater. He sendeth more grace when the labors increase. Through add, to added affliction, he addeth his mercy. Through multiplied trials, his multiplied peace. It goes on to say his love has no limits, his grace has no measure, his power has no boundaries known unto men. For out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. That's increase. That's the increase we need. And that particular song talks about all of them. Grace and mercy and peace. Strength. It's all there. That's what we need. That's what we need. While the world is trying to increase in goods, we need to increase in grace and peace and mercy and love and power. That's the increase that we need. True increase. He says here, my grace is sufficient. It's enough. It's all you need. 
He says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. What does that mean? It's made perfect in weakness. That phrase, to make perfect, it means to finish. It means to complete. It means to fulfill. It means to accomplish. And it means to finish the necessary process. But here's the caveat. It means to finish. It means to finish the necessary process with the results rolling over to the next level. With the results rolling over to the next level. To me, to me, that speaks of increase. That's increase. When it spills over, when it rolls over to the next level. Oh yes, oh yes. That's the increase that we need. There, it's talking about power. So we we went we went from we went from his from his uh, uh, grace to his power. Because you find the word power twice in this verse. Even though in the English, listen, when you read it in the English, especially right here in the King James Version, you would think it's two different words, but it's not. It says in the first part, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And then he goes on to say, most gladly, therefore, will I rather uh, boast, or rather glory, rather, in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may dwell upon me. That word strength, that word power. Two different words, but in the Greek, it's the same word. He just simply used two different words to describe the same dynamic. When I should say the word dynamic, because the word that it's talking about there is dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite, which is also a derivative of dynamic. We get more power. And I think I said it recently. I think I said it recently. Pain or suffering increases power. Suffering increases power. You want true increase? You want true increase? True increase comes when you know the Lord, when you know the Lord, and when you are willing to, this when you are willing, oh my, when you are willing to endure suffering, pain, willing to endure. Once again, who is he speaking to? Those who are called, those who are preserved, those who are sanctified, those who have like precious faith. That's who he's speaking to. And if that's who you are, if that's who you are, this is the increase that you need. This is the increase that you need. You need more grace. You need more mercy. You need more love. You need more peace. You need more strength. This is what you need. I know you're going to say you need a lot of things. Name, and I, I said earlier, in a post, I said, name five things that you need. More than anything, five things. I said, don't mention money. That's the first thing we think about. I need more money. No, you need grace. You need more grace. You need more peace. You need more mercy. You need more love. You need more strength. Strength to endure. Strength to endure so that you and I, you and I, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. So you and I will be able to say, I would rather glory in my infirmities. Who ever heard of glorying in your infirmities? What? He says, I would rather glory in my infirmities for a reason. So that the power of Christ may rest upon me. His power finds a resting place on me because I'm willing to endure the suffering, the pain. I'm willing. I'm willing. 
My old song comes to mind. These songs are coming to my heart tonight. I am willing, Lord. I am willing, Lord, to be just exactly what you want me to be. Are you willing? Are you willing? Do you want these things, these particular things, to be increased in your life? Or are you or are you have that tunnel vision that you just need money? Wealth. Health and wealth. They, they, they go together. Nothing wrong with being, listen, nothing wrong with being wealthy. If the Lord has given you riches and wealth, God bless you. It's not a sin to be rich. It's not a sin to be rich. It's not a sin to, it's definitely not a sin to be uh, healthy. Nothing wrong with being healthy and wealthy. Once again, there's nothing wrong with those things, but it becomes wrong when it becomes your focal point. When it's what you live for. And if you are in ministry, if that's what your ministry is all about, that is a problem. Your ministry cannot be based on money and things. It cannot be. You can't. No. No. There are other things that we need in our lives. Other things. Vastly, vastly more important things. Things that you cannot see. Things that you can receive. Spiritual things. Grace, mercy, love, peace, and power. His strength. That's what I want increase. That's the increase that I need. That's the increase that I need in my life. And if God so chooses to increase me in other ways, I will receive it. So we got to be like Solomon. Yes, Solomon. You remember Solomon, the son of David? When he became king, God asked him, what do you want? Ask me for anything. What if God asked you? Tell me what you want. And I'll give it to you. And I can imagine that most of us, I, I'm, I'm thinking most of us, I'm probably wrong, but I'm thinking that most of us would say, I want money. And that's not what Solomon said. When God asked him, what do you want? He said, give me wisdom. Wisdom so that I can rule your people. Well, rule them properly. The man asked for wisdom. He didn't ask for intelligence. Once again, the difference between intelligence and wisdom. You can, you can have all the smarts in the world. You can have all the intelligence. But wisdom is knowing when. Knowing when. It's having, if it's having the knowledge and the understanding of how and when to use what you have. And Solomon said, just give me wisdom. So I can rule your people. And when the Lord heard this, the Lord, I can say the Lord was impressed. Can I use that phrase? Impressed. He was pleased. Because he said, because you have asked for wisdom and you did not ask for material things, you did not ask for riches, I will give you riches. Gave it to him. So sometimes God will give us Something that we did not ask for because we asked for something else. That's what happened in the case of Solomon. But if you know the story of Solomon, you know that he was not a, a, a quite he was he was the he was the richest man ever. But he was not a wise steward with what God gave him. And he eventually would sort of lose his focus entirely. You go on to the book of First Kings and you read chapter 11 and you see where he eventually ended up and how he ended up. He, he, got, he, he gathered himself. He, the Lord brought him back, but he, he went far away from the Lord for a while because he did, not, he did not do well with what he had. When, I think the Bible, the Bible speaks about when riches increase, what happens when riches can increase? They can turn our heads. They can twist our spirits when we 
a lot when these things can happen. We have to be a good steward of what God gives us. We need the proper things to be increased in our lives. And I'll repeat them again. Grace, mercy, peace, love, and power slash strength. Same thing. That's what we need increased in our lives. Shut down the naysayers, the false prophets, the false teachers who say you need a, a car in your garage, you need more houses, you need money in your, in your bank account. All those things may be good, but that's not what you need to be increased. Spiritual things. Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul told us that he wanted our spirit, soul, and body to be increased. Or to be blessed, rather. That's what we need. That's what we need. Let's have increase in the right places and in the right things. And remember, Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. Lord, we bless your name tonight. We bless you. We thank you, Lord, for this word that you've given us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we, Lord, you had, you had us preempt our scheduled word tonight with a word about the rapture. You're coming soon, Lord Jesus. So we pray that there are those who are listening right now who may not be ready, who will pray and ask you to come into their hearts. Lord, I pray that you will have your way. Lord, I pray you'll touch each and every one right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, Lord, I pray you might lift them, raise them. Lord, I pray you might bring conviction, Lord Jesus. Draw them unto yourself, those who do not know you tonight. Lord, I pray that your spirit, Lord Jesus, might bring them into a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. If you're listening, if you're watching right now, you don't know Jesus Christ, just pray with me right now. Lord Jesus, forgive me, cleanse me, wash me. I believe that you died for me and rose again. And Lord, I thank you. I believe that you did this for me. I confess my sins to you right now. I thank you for coming into my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. It's not in the prayer. It's not in the prayer. It's in faith. Faith doesn't necessarily happen that way. It's by faith. Faith. So Lord, I pray that there are others listening right now who have been deceived and they are putting their trust in other things. Lord, I pray you might also draw them back unto yourself, Lord Jesus. And Lord, I pray that they will receive the gospel, the gospel that is true, the gospel uh, that will not alienate them, the gospel that will not uh, deceive them, Lord Jesus. Lord, we need these things increased in our life. Grace and mercy and peace and love and power. Lord, increase these things in our life. Bless us right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank him once again for being with us tonight. We know that his presence, his presence has been real. And we bless him and we thank him. You can hear all of these podcasts again on Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, iHeartRadio, and TuneIn Radio. Also at Spreaker.com. We come to you live these Tuesday nights on YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitter, and Spreaker.com. I have to give that shout out to those who do listen faithfully on Spreaker.com. Uh, as soon as this podcast is over, uh, it will be available on Spreaker.com, and almost immediately it begins to be downloaded. This particular podcast will begin to be downloaded from across the United States uh, and around the world. So we thank the Lord for what he is doing. Uh, we thank the Lord that uh, his word is going out. Amen. We are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And we are doing it via the world wide web, this thing called the internet. We are spreading the gospel message, the message of the cross. Amen. And so we bless him and we thank him for what he is doing. You can go 
to our YouTube channel. Once again, you can go there, type in That's the Word Ministries, and that'll bring you right to our YouTube channel. Uh, you can also go to our website at that's the word.org. That's the word.org. And you can go there also. Amen. So we once again we thank you for listening. Spreaker. We thank you for watching. And don't forget tomorrow night we'll be right back here with another riveting Bible study. We're in the middle of a Bible study on spiritual warfare. Tomorrow night we'll be talking about uh, the warriors. We talked about the warriors' shoes, and we're going to talk about the warriors' faith on tomorrow night. The warrior's faith, very important, uh, possibly the most important piece of the soldier's armor, the arm, the the shield of faith. That's tomorrow night, so make sure that you invite somebody to listen. We'll be here about 8.30. We pray that you'll be here with us live. Amen. I'm Pastor Michael Jakes. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. May God bless you.